Okay, now coming up is Jean Lean and with her talk, Appreciating Fathers. But before we start, uh, Leanne is going to have a special number for us. Ooh, these cool shadows. Hey, everybody. So anyway, <laughs> I wrote a song. Daddy took my hand. He taught me how to fish and how to wish on anything my heart could dream of. He made mistakes along the way, but who of us can stand and say we could have done it better without his love? He was gentle, he is strong, he is loud and sometimes wrong. <laughs> Help me learn to stand up strong and say, I can do anything through my father's love. I can be anyone that I just dream of. When the world throws curveballs, I have my daddy's glove. Catching hopes and dreams with my daddy's love. He wait up late until I made it home. Never asked me why I didn't phone. When it was dark, I never felt alone. Always to welcome me back from the long, hard road. Daddy became dad, good times and through sad. He always was a light along the way. He is gentle, he is strong, he's loud and often wrong, but he's helped me learn to stand up strong and say, I can do anything through my daddy's love, and I can be anyone that I just dream of. When the world throws curveballs, I have my daddy's glove. Catching hopes and dreams with my daddy's love. All the years flew by like diamonds on a string. We're both closer to the end than the beginning. My dad was just a man, and now I understand we are all reflections of our father's love. And we can do anything through our Father's love. We can be anyone that our hearts dream of. When the world throws curveballs, I have my daddy's glove. My Father's love. Catching hopes and dreams with my Father's love. Yes, you know when the world throws curveballs, I have my father's love. Catching hopes and dreams with my father's love. Thank you. Of our talk today, which is about happy, it's about appreciating fathers. It's about Happy Father's Day. I think that um, to me, it seems like being a father in today's world is perhaps a lot more difficult than it used to be. And I I say this because you know, way way back in the history of mankind, men were the hunters and they were the gatherers and they had their not the gatherers the hunters they had their spears and you know they went out and chased the woolly mammoths and and then brought you know brought the bacon home that and that was their clearly defined role and the women are the only ones who can actually birth children so that they they stayed home and stayed at the cave and um, and, and nurtured the children, took care of the children. They also did some gathering and cooking and things like that. Well, in today's society, the women still are the ones to do the birthing. And so sometimes they also are the ones that, uh, uh, that take care of the children as well. 
but the role for men is not quite so defined. Because some men stay home and take care of the children. Some women are the ones that go out and earn the living. In some families, they're both doing that, and they have help with the children. And of course, there's some, uh, some where there, there are no children, where, where men are just going about trying, trying to do what they, what they can do in the world as best they can. So I think it's a little bit more difficult for men these days because their role is not quite as defined. Now, there's something else that our society has added on to that, and that is that we were coming to an understanding that in the past several centuries, our society has become very patriarchal, meaning the men were the ones that were at work. The men were the ones that made decisions. A lot of times, even in the home, the men were the ones that, that said, okay, this is how it's going to be, and then the women followed. And we saw things like in, in, in the workplace that men would actually earn more money than women doing the same thing. So, of course, all of this is information that's floating around out there in society nowadays. We know about this. And I think there's been a tendency to blame men, uh, to, to sort of look at them like, um, oh, you're a man, um, with women. And if, I mean, if you don't see that, you know, I'm sure that we've all heard a phrase that said with a lot of derision about, about the white man, the white male does all these things, is so privileged. And what I'd like to posit Today is that that derision is really not helpful, and it's not necessary. You know, the men I know today are not the ones that caused the patriarchal society that we have. They're not. That was caused by generations ago. The men I know today work hard at whatever their job is, in the home or outside the home. They, they do their best for their families. The fathers that I see try to have an understanding about their children and what their children need and provide for them. They, they're trying to develop their feminine nature. They're doing all of these wonderful things. The men and the fathers I know today. So today, especially on Father's Day, for me, I would like to appreciate the men for who and what they are. For who and what they are. Rather than tell them that they should be something else. Which is, I think, what's been happening a lot. Now Webster just defines father as male parent. Um, he also says an originator or source, the, the definition of father. And then the verb, to father, means to provide for, to care for. And I know there, there are a lot of men, even if you don't have children, that act as father figures. We heard that in the, in the daily, daily reading. Uh, for instance, I, I'm in recovery. I know a lot of men in recovery who sponsor other men and act very much like a father figure for them, raising them in how to be, how to be a man, how to be um, uh, integrous within themselves, how to live life in a good way. Uh, also, there, there are, are men who have animal companions. I personally, I've got, I've got a little dog and a little cat. And, well, actually, the cat's bigger than the dog, but, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there are families of that sort, too, where the, the man can feel like a dad, or, or maybe it's just a big, big brother, or maybe they're nephews, or, you know, there are many ways in which men can act as that father figure. So we're really speaking about all of them today, all of them, and that male energy that is really so precious. I recently took a class with a quantum physicist, a quantum physicist, sounds really scientific, right? And his name is Amit Goswami. 
and he's really on the cutting edge of this, and he talks about subtle bodies. Now, subtle bodies are the ones that are not physical, like it's where the chakras reside. They're not quite physical, but there is an essence to them. There's an energy about them. And in talking about the differences between males and females, what he said was that in males, the third chakra is very highly developed. Now, the third chakra is the solar plexus. And this is where we say it's the center of our personal power. It's where we have, uh, we have the ability to direct things, to move things forward. And it's very highly developed in men. And the second chakra, which is called the wisdom chakra, but it's also about relationships, about sharing, about communication. That, that one is not so highly developed in men. It's more highly developed in women. Now, what this professor says is that in today's world, we have been run by that male energy, that solar plexus energy for a long time, and we need to bring more of that second chakra energy in. But that doesn't mean that we need to negate the masculine energy. It doesn't mean that we take it away. It means let's just balance it a bit. Let's balance it a bit. And there was an effort to balance this when women's lib first happened. Now I was I was young and just starting my career when all this was going on and, and, and at the time what they were saying was women in order in order to rise to the same level as men in for instance in your career that what you want to do is be like a man. So I, I took that to heart. I, I bought suits. I had a suit for every day of, every day of work. Um, and I learned to, uh, to uh, be, be stoic, more stoic. You know, I would never, 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 never cry because that would have been more like a woman and would have made me weak, right? I learned to shake hands really with a firm handshake. See, we were, we were taught that the way for us to get along was to be like men. And I think we lost a lot of the goodness that comes along with that inside, that nurturing side, the birthing side. And I fear that what's happening today is some of that as well, but in reverse that men are being told, you have to be like a woman. Well, perhaps there is more development of that second chakra area that needs to occur, perhaps, and I see that happening. But what we don't want is for men to say they have to be like women and throw away their masculinity. And I think sometimes we think that's what should happen. But that does nothing to heal any sort of imbalance. We want, I want to, I want to have the males in my life be fully male, fully masculine, and also bring in some of the feminine energy. We all have both of these energies to bring it in for balance, to heal. So how can we go about doing that? I like acronyms. And I have an acronym and things that we can do, tools that we can do. And being Father's Day, the acronym is DAD, D-A-D. Now the first D stands for discern their divinity. In Genesis 5-2, it says, He created the male and female, and he blessed them and called them human. Male and female, both were created equally. We don't want to totally ignore the masculine side. 
we would be at a loss. We would be losing a great deal. And even um, Jesus, the Christed being, when some Pharisees came and they were testing him and said, um, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? And what Jesus said is that, have you not read that from the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. See, what he was saying there was not necessary. It, it, it was about a particular circumstance, about divorce and marriage, but it was also talking to us in terms of the energies, the masculine and the feminine energies. That in a well-balanced society, in a well-balanced person, that we balance those energies, that we have them both, not that we throw one away to exclude it, but that we have both. They become one. This is the balance that we're looking for. So understanding that, then we can see that this masculine energy is divine. It's divine. It's meant to be. It wasn't a mistake. Masculine energy is not wrong. It's exactly what it needs to be. And we balance it with the feminine. So the A in dad stands for appreciate the masculine energy. Appreciate it. One of the saddest times that I can remember in my life was when I was a teenager. And um, in, in my household, mother, she kind of ruled the roost, I'll just say that. She had some judgment, and, and she felt like she knew how to do things, and dad didn't. And, you know, she'd say, oh, your father, sort of in a sort of tone that made us all think, oh, mother knows, but dad doesn't. And so one time. One time, uh, Dad was about to go on a business trip, and he um, he was talking with one of my sisters, and she she told us this after he after he talked to her that he asked, you know, if I if I went on this trip and then I just stayed gone, would would y'all even miss me? Oh my gosh! When I heard that, my whole countenance sank. Because I thought, have I been responsible for him thinking he doesn't matter? It was a very, very sad time. And after that, of course, I made all kinds of changes in, in how I treated him and showing him love. But that ap appreciating who and what he was was so important. I was in Sedona recently, and uh, I did not, uh, it, it was my first time, so uh, it was my first time to experience the vortexes, and vortexes are the energy centers that are there, and I didn't know that there are some vortexes that are masculine, some vortexes that are feminine, and then some that are a balance of the two, and they gave me this little, little handout. Um, and so this, I want to read what it says about the masculine side. It said, it can be seen as being on a scale that has strength at the high end and weakness at the low end. People who have a strong masculine side are self-confident. They have the internal strength to take charge of their own lives and to claim their rights in life. This makes them good at standing up to people who try to take away their rights by force or intimidation or manipulation. Having a strong masculine side means being good at taking risks when appropriate, being decisive when necessary, and being able to focus or concentrate in order to get things done. It also means being good at figuring out how to get out of life what is desired figuring out how to operate responsibly 
and how to reason without distorting reality. Oh my gosh, I love that masculine energy. Isn't that wonderful energy to have? The, the, the ability to get what you want, the ability to have the strength, the ability to stand up, the ability to, um, uh, to protect, uh, the, the, the ability to stand firm, to reason things through. That's a wonderful energy. So let's appreciate that energy. Let's appreciate it. That's the A. So we've had discern their divinity, A for appreciate the masculine um, energy. And then the last D stands for declare it. Declare your love. Declare your appreciation. Speak it out. It's like the example with my dad. I loved my dad. But how often did I tell him I loved him? How often did I tell him I appreciate you for what you're doing? You know, for the first probably 10 years of my life, he was the sole breadwinner. Oh my God, he worked hard. I mean hard. To have that, that declaration of dad, gosh, I see how hard you're working. And I just, I, I love you. That would have meant so much to him. You know, it was it was a sad moment when my sister had that talk with us, but I'm glad it happened because it, it, it made me be more declarative to declare my love for him. There's so many things about men and about fathers that we can appreciate. And I learned, I learned with my husband, uh, some through the, the, the school of hard knocks. Uh, for instance, I, I became like my mother in some respects. I think we have a tendency to do that. Um, and so there were times when it was, uh, it was clear to me that I was right and he was wrong, and then I would let him know, right? And it was sort of like that koan that goes, if a man speaks in the forest and there's no woman to hear him, is he still wrong? <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we laugh about that because there, there's, there's truth to, to that and how we treat our men and how we treat that masculine energy. And... I learned, that, fortunately, I learned to be more appreciative than I was early on in the relationship. You know, and, and, and first in the relationship, it was important to me that he knew, that I knew, how to fold towels the best way. And then he had to follow that. <laughs> you know, he, he never knew that coming into the marriage. Now, you know, much, much to his surprise, Several years later, I found really the new and better way to fold towels, and then he had to learn that one too, right? Uh, so who was really right in the beginning? It, it wasn't me. And I had to learn that there were things he was going to do that were just different because of his masculine energy. And I learned to appreciate those things. Like, for example, there was still a, a little boyness in him, and so sometimes he'd, he'd open the cabinet door and then, and knock on it like he hit his head and go, oh, you know, and it was, it was to make me laugh, a little, little funny thing that he would do. Or, you know, there's that other men thing where they, they go to the dirty clothes and they pick something up and they just smell it and it's like, oh, okay, it's okay, I'll put it on today. And it's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? That's dirty. It's that male energy, that male masculine energy that really Really, I learned I don't want to. I don't want to tamp that down. I don't, I don't want to make that go away. I, I, I think another another thing I learned was uh, he used to watch sports a lot, and oh my gosh, I thought, oh, you're always watching sports and the, and sports this and sports this, and that now the sportscaster saying the same thing he said two hours ago, and you're still listening to the channel and. 
and it, it would it would really bother me. But when I look at it in terms of what really what else did he have to do? If he couldn't fold towels right, <laughs> if he couldn't do all these other things right, if he didn't have his spear so that he could go out hunting the woolly mammoth, what was he to do? Where was this masculine energy to be utilized? Where was it to be expressed? Where could he, could he be what he was? Sports was a great outlet for that. It was great. So even in that, you know, I was trying to take something away from his masculinity. And instead, I finally learned to promote it. I became an avid uh, Yankees baseball fan too. Um, but uh, but it took it took learning for me. It took learning. So here we are on Father's Day. We want to celebrate the men here. Whatever whatever your persuasion, whatever that masculine energy, we want to celebrate it. We want to know that it is absolutely divine. That however you express it is divine. We want to appreciate, appreciate that masculine here. And let's declare our love for them, especially on this day. Happy Father. So in our time of meditation today, let us feel ourselves firmly, firmly planted in Mother Earth, underneath Father's God. And as we close our eyes, if that's comfortable, and settle in, Take these words with us. This was written by Bob Luckin and his dog, Murphy. Written in the book, The Diary of a Mindful Dog. And I dedicate it to all the men and the fathers here today. If not for you, there would be a place of emptiness in the heart of God. If not for you, all the good you've done would still need doing. If not for you, the spark of your ideas would not have ignited a fire in others. If not for you, the key role you've played in life's drama would remain unfilled if not for you, at least one person would not have awakened to their dreams. If not for you, your triumphs could not be examples to inspire others. If not for you, someone who needed love would not have received it. If not for you, a life would have been shortened or never have existed. If not for you, the song of life would have missed a beat. If not for you, your gifts would remain ungiven. If not for you, another might have suffered in your place. If not for you, someone would have no path to follow. If not for you, there would be one less smile, one less laugh, and one less hug. If not for you, there would be one less ember of love to warm the soul. If not for you, something would be missing.
Murphy ends with, You have always made a difference to me. So in this time of meditation, we realize the importance blessing of the masculine, of all fathers, we've each had one, and whether they're present with us today or not, whether they were present growing up or not, there is still much for us to appreciate. So we settle in our hearts. And as we simply breathe deeply, we let ourselves feel the love that we felt as a father or from our father. Appreciating deeply the balance of all life. If not for them, something would be missing. So we can take a deeper breath, thicken the breath, and feel ourselves firmly again in the physical body with our hands and feet more recognizable as part of us and then when we're ready open your beautiful little eyes the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Yay, God.